The thing I like about the shuttle is that your racking's the same. It's, it's straightforward racking, okay? Uh, it's pieces of metal that, that do a job and support the loads. Your forklift trucks are the same, your drivers are the same. And the shuttle is the interface between the two. It's almost like a driverless forklift truck. So it gives you loads of benefits that your forklift truck does, but it maximises the efficiency of your racking. It's quick, it's efficient. When you've got big bulks of stock, gets it all away for you. Yeah, I find it very good. I like it. The thing you can do with a shuttle that you can't do with any other system, and that is you can mix first in, first out with first in, last out solution. And what the benefit there is that if you've got a lane of 12 pallets and you want to store six of one type and six of another, then you can. You can access them from both ends. Or if you want to store 12 date sensitive ones, you can put them in one end and pick them out the other end. If you want to have four and eight, you can mix them in the same lane. You can pick one out of one side and the other out of the other. You can't do that with any other system. There's no other dynamic system that allows you to get that functionality. The key driver for the choice of a shuttle system is you've got lots of pallets and you haven't got a great number of SKU stock keeping units because that's where it does lend itself. So what you'll find, if, if, if you're ever looking at a system, for example, if you, you're going to consider a pallet live system, that's where you put the pallets on one end, they roll down rollers and get picked off the other end, you should be looking at a shuttle. And there's a number of reasons for doing that. The one is your price per pallet for the racking itself is considerably less. So your initial outlay for the racking will be lower. The second one is all of the complexity is in the shuttle, as opposed to being all the rollers all in, inside the racking. So it, may, it reduces your maintenance and your space saving. By dropping the, uh, the, the angle of the, the runners, the rollers, the saving, you could get yourself another level in and increase the capacity in the building. So it's a lower cost, less maintenance, better solution. The other method of storing lots of pallets when you haven't got uh, many SKUs is driving. Now, driving as a total package, just as an initial outlay, will be less than the shuttle system. But your massive benefit comes from your efficiencies. So the two big ones are that you will need less trucks because your pick rate will be faster because you're not driving into the racking. And the fact that you're not driving into the racking reduces your rack damage as well. So you get a whole benefit of better efficiency is less damage um, for that slight increase in initial outlay. Before we had this, we didn't have the capacity to, to hold the stock that we needed. So our stock term was too high, our, our lost sales were higher than we wanted. So it's, you, there's all sorts of benefits you're getting and you don't realise you're going to get them until you, till you've got them. Like you're not driving past all those pallets in conventional racking to get to the pallet that you need to because it's there in front of you. <laughs> The remote control, it, it's got a few buttons on it, but what we found in the real world, there's two buttons. There's one that goes in and one that goes out. So basically the forklift truck driver has to put the shuttle on the rails, put the pallet onto the shuttle and press the in button. The shuttle then does everything else. It drives itself up to the clear location, pops the pallet down and comes back ready for the next one. So the, the forklift truck driver loading the system, that's all he does. Puts the shuttle in, puts the pallets on, keeps feeding it until it's finished. To unload it, well, there's an out button. So simply, to get the pallets out, uh, you press the out button, the shuttle goes into the system, picks the pallet up, brings it, and um, away you go. There's some specific features that, that, I, that I did uh, pick out. Some of the specific features include the fact that you can have multi-pallet, different depths of pallet in the same lane. And it doesn't matter where they sit in the lane, the, the shuttle will measure them, recognise what they are, and move them to the place accordingly. The other one is the distances. If you do have an overhang, you can set the distance between the pallets. And that can all be done on the remote control. You don't have to get anybody in to do it, so you can have a different lanes 
Uh, you can have big gaps, small gaps to maximise your space, large gaps to have an overhang. And these all, they're all in there. The key differentiator with the battery is that we use lithium technology. Now what that means is that there's a number of benefits for that. Uh, and they include the fact that you can charge it quicker, so you can get up to full charge quicker than uh, conventional batteries. So you can get it charged in a shift. Next one, it will carry its charge for longer and maintain that performance. So you're going to get longer uh, longevity at the battery, both from holding its charge and the amount of times that you can charge it. And the other one is the fact that it's lighter. Uh, this battery in this, uh, this shuttle weighs about 13, 14 kilos and that will operate it for all that time. Well, I've had three days work out of this, this uh, that so far this week. So, I have lost quite a long time. The ability to change the battery uh, without any tools and with, with just a, literally a, a plug-in, plug-out solution make, makes it a lot easier. The, the lithium-ion gives you longevity, it gives you fast charge, it gives you no memory effect, so if you do part charge it, it isn't detrimental to the battery. Uh, it is a key benefit to, to this particular shuttle system. The other things that the shuttle does, it's a bit like your modern car. If you go back 20 years, if you were going on a journey of about 100 miles, you check the oil, check the tyre pressures, check the fan belt was okay and, and all the rest of it. What you do now is you get in, turn the key and go. And that's the design that's on this. And when the car needs a service, it tells you. And this is exactly the same. On the remote control, when the shuttle needs a service, if your shuttle has any, any issues at all with regards to motors overheating, wheels slipping, there's all sensors in there that will appear on the remote and, and tell you that you've got an issue. So basically, it's, it, the intelligence is all built, built into the machine so that the maintenance can just fit into a standard schedule. So ma minimum maintenance. The servicing is a concern for people. Now, the first thing is you design out any problems that you're going to have. And the second one is you put a service package in place that the customer is going to have some confidence in. And what we've done is we have trained engineers across the country, we have a backup of spare parts, and we've even got a spare shuttle available that we can get into a customer's as quick as we can pick it up and get it to their site. The shuttle itself, once you've got a shuttle system in, if your business changes, you can add additional shuttles into the system. So the remote controls are standard. So they'll run up to four shuttles off one remote control. So you could have one forklift driver operating four shuttles to bring the relevant pallet, pallets to them. That massively increases your efficiency. So it keeps things very simple, very standard, so that when you do, when your business increases, your pick rates change, your customer demands change, you can change your shuttles to suit. I think these are excellent for, for UK because warehousing is quite expensive in the UK. Uh, land is expensive, so you want to maximise the warehouse in space and that, that does that exactly that with the maximise the cube you're getting rid of your, your forklift aisles and you're just getting a denser storage uh, the distribution chains are getting longer so things are coming over in bulk and containers uh, so you need to store it you need to, and you need to store a lot of the same product in many cases and that does exactly that for you if I had to put it into three words I'd say that it was it was simple it was scalable and it was efficient